Whether you're new to the hobby or a lifelong gamer, there's always a mix of new and old games waiting to be rediscovered. In this series, we cover the top 10 games, both the hottest and classics, all picked by our viewers as the games they couldn't let us overlook. I'm Matthew Jude, and this Cardboard Countdown was made possible in part by Wise Wizard Games. Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Debbie. And this is Robot Quest Arena, the newest game from Wise Wizard Games. If you like deck building games like Star Realms, and you like robots, you are definitely going to want to check this out. This game is so fun, and it's really easy to learn how to play. And check out these adorable robot minis. Pug is my favorite. Pug was built by a girl named Rhea. Every turn, you're going to have a five card hand. Some cards give you energy. You can use energy to buy new cards from the shop for your deck. You can also use your energy to move your robot around the arena. Other cards you have will be attack cards. Attack, some of them are hand to hand, so you can only use those on robots that are right next to you. Other attacks are ranged, and you'll be able to shoot robots that are many spaces away. However, you cannot shoot through obstacles like walls or other robots. We're gonna have a complete playthrough video on our Kickstarter page, so you should check it out. See you there. Bye-bye. Almanac The Dragon Road is not only the first game our viewers picked this month, but it's also the first entry in the Almanac series of games from acclaimed designer Scott Alms. Each round of the game is played on a different page in the game's game book, and each page represents a unique location with a special twist on worker placement. The result combines rich narrative with intuitive yet unique game mechanisms, making every game a new adventure. Many viewers were excited about 2020's Almanac The Dragon Road, including Peter E, who states his reason for picking the game this month is because Scott Holmes. So sure, kudos for Scott Holmes, but also this poses the interesting question. What if the exact same game had been designed by someone else, such as Alexander Fister, or Alexander Hamilton, or Hamilton Fister Ander, or this mug? What secret are you hiding? But it does pose the question, right? What impact does the designer's pedigree have on people's interest in the game? And perhaps the better question, why didn't Scott Olms call his game Olmsanac Dragon Road? That would have been cool. Then again, maybe that sounds more like something Hamilton Fister Ander would have done. Believe it or not, I, I mean, I guess that's up to you but heart of crown is the next game on this month's list which takes place during the days when swords and magic still ruled the world a world of danger a world of intrigue a world of roaming bands of street magicians going around the countryside pillaging plundering and performing card tricks for unsuspecting and unwilling onlookers frankly in heart of crown a long and destructive war has finally ended huzzah allowing the entire continent to become unified. But before the Empire can enjoy some peace and quiet, the Emperor falls victim to a mysterious ailment called 17 knife wounds in the back. Even worse, the Emperor never declared a successor. Worse still, the street magicians cancelled their one night only performance in the town square. And tens of people were excited about that. Heart of Crown is a deck building card game in which each player starts with the same deck and strengthens that deck with strategic cards as they work towards their ultimate goal of seating their chosen princess on the throne and players will need to be quick to support the right princess in order to get the resources and leverage that they'll need. Viewer Dice Aspire says that they just downloaded the PC game and are excited to try it. Exactly Dice Spire, the original card game was released in Japan in 2011 and the English first edition followed in 2017 and the PC version is out now on Steam. And there's a standalone expansion, which I got, it's called Fairy Garden, not in the script, boom. Justified. First there was Monsters and Minions in which players wage war against the Dragool invaders. Then there was Fiends and Familiars where wild beasts are befriended and cruel spirits dispelled, of course not to be confused with friends and family. But now the fully formed battle-hardened heroes must put aside their differences to defend the Kingdom of Nalos and uncover a mystery that lies at the heart of the abandoned lands. 
This is Role Player Adventures, a cooperative storybook board game for one to four players set in the world of Role Player. Pick from one of six pre generated characters or import a favourite Role Player character and take them on a heroic journey. What's more, Adventures does not require the Role Player base game or any of its expansions to play. And viewer Dave M cast his vote for the game because, quote, I love Role Player, can't wait for this campaign style game. I know what you mean, Dave. Personally, I can't wait for the game King of Twelve, the game Brotherhood and Unity, and the eventual collapse of civilization in general. What? Always on the lookout for new land, the Vikings of the 8th through 11th centuries weren't above fighting their own countrymen, which sets the stage for fjords, the tactical battle for the best land. In the game, two clan leaders fight each other using the right tactics for a fruitful plot for land along Norway's coast. They quickly build up villages at strategic locations and to secure the largest possible portion of the region for their clan they fight with anyone they can. Axes, swords, unkind words and phrases. Viewer Eric B says that he picked Fjords this month because quote never got to play the original interested in the new version it's tall laying What's not to love? What's not to love? Oh, I don't know, Eric. How about a cardboard box full of spiders? I don't think I would love that. Or like a chain smoking bear. Did you think about that? Or how about hunting down the original copy from the, the, half a year only to finally get it and then here almost immediately they're reprinting it. And Phil Walker Harding's working on it as well. <sighs> this copy's in Dutch. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm so angry. Anyway, up next is Ragnarok, a two player area control game by the same designer of Santorini and Santorini, New York. But this is no Santorini. It's got a different name for starters, it's Ragnaroks. Players are Viking clan leaders, but these Viking clan leaders aren't fighting over foreign fjords or fjordi. I'm gonna buy it, aren't I? I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy it. These Vikings use rune stones to make their clans claims of land. Vikings are really, really into land. Turns consist of placing rune stones or moving Vikings across the board and then Whenever an enclosed area is created that contains Vikings of just a single clan, that clan takes ownership of that area. Did I say clam or did I say clan? There are no clams in this. Viewer Kaman Chan reminds us that the Ragnaroks Kickstarter campaign just concluded and I'm pumped about the game. Love Santorini so much. I agree, Kaman Chan. I love it too. In fact, the only thing I love more then somewhat abstract 3D worker placement structure building game set on an island off the coast of the Aegean Sea is reading ad copy. I can't get enough of it and I'm in luck because this episode was also made possible by Anno 1800 from Ubisoft Entertainment and Thames and Cosmos. Anno 1800 is an epic city building strategic board game based on Ubisoft's popular PC game of the same name. In it, players strive to build their industrial might as they develop an island society at the dawn of the industrial age. Investing in nautical fleets enables expansion and trade with new territories, which will provide the economic stability their growing corporations will need in order to survive and thrive. But above all else, players must focus on maintaining the health and happiness of their home island citizens because while the citizens are initially satisfied with simple foods and clothing, they will soon demand valuable luxury goods. What? The Coopers got exotic spices from a foreign land? Now their neighbours want exotic spices from a foreign land. What's more, your competition never sleeps and they may steal your achievements right out from under your nose if you're not careful. Whose island will prosper and whose will fail? Find out in Anno 1800, available at your friendly local gaming store and by following the link in this video's description for more information. 
The next game our viewers upvoted is Circadian's Chaos Order, in which players take on the role of one of six asymmetric factions. Each faction has their own means of winning the game, unique leaders, attribute cards, taste in music, and special abilities. The game's description on its Board Game Geek page recounts an epic cataclysm that shakes the foundations of the entire circadian world and plunges its people into combat. Across the scarred landscape lay six massive structures towering over the forces fighting below. Could these be the ancient relics the legends speak of? Or are they just abandoned office parks? I don't know, but let's fight over them like some fjord-loving vikings in Circadian's Chaos Order. Viewer Dicefire included Circadian's Chaos Order on their list of picks this month, stating that the original 2019 Circadian's First Light was a wonderful, underrated game, and this is a sequel to that. True, sequels that extend an original's game concept always are interesting to see. But let's hope it's more of a, you know, a Godfather Part 2 type situation than a Part 3. Next, Martin Wallace and Tree Fog Games presents Discworld Ankh-Morpork, set in the largest city-state in Toe Pratich literary landscape of Discworld. In this game, Lord Betinari has disappeared. What? Now players lead different factions, all trying to take control of the city's government and towering office parks. These actions take place on a map of Ankh-Morpork, with players placing minions and buildings through card play. Everyone has a secret personality with specific victory conditions, just like in real life, which means nobody knows for sure exactly what their opponents need to do in order to win. Perhaps their win condition is to let you win. Wouldn't that be something? Oh, the ties we share. <laughs> Viewer Kaman Chan commented on this selection as well, saying that this is one of my favorite games. Too bad the publisher lost the license or will never be reprinting it in its current form. For those interested, Nantinarking is a retheme of the game. Good to know! And I guess in this case, this makes Nantinarking more of a franchise reboot of the original game rather than a sequel. Let's hope it's more of a Spider Man Homecoming franchise reboot and not like an amazing Spider Man type thing. You know? I have never seen any either of those movies. <gasps> The next game upvoted by viewers this month is 2014's two-player Onitama, which describes itself as a perfect information game, which at first I thought was pretty presumptuous of it. I mean, this game is pretty great, but really Onitama? You're the perfect information game? No other game informations as perfectly as you? Fine, I see how it is. But then I learned that this actually means that both players have access to all the same information throughout the game. So it's all strategy. And that makes a lot more sense. Only Tama, I've added you to my list of people and things to apologize to. In Only Tama, both players begin with five pawns on their side of the board and then move them using a rotating set of options made possible by a set of cards that will cycle in and out of play between the players throughout the course of the game. Moving on to an opponent's pawn removes it from the game and taking the opponent's main pawn or moving your main pawn into the opponent's starting space wins you the game. <gasps> Several viewers volunteered votes for Onitama this month, including Simon B, who praises this quote, beautiful and clean abstract game. Unless, of course, you drop your coffee of Onitama into a sewer grate or set it on fire. I mean, I don't know if that's what Simon d d d did or would do. Or, I'm sorry, I don't mean to insinuate anything, Simon. I apologise. I'm going to add you to my apology list. I'm sorry. The second highest number of votes this month was received by Nidavellir, which plays on members of a stalwart dwarf kingdom, which is threatened by a dragon named Fafnir. Searching through every tavern in this kingdom, hiring the most skillful dwarfs, recruiting the most prestigious heroes, and building the best battalion may all be just enough to give the players the advantage they'll need in order to defeat their mortal enemy. And Simon B wrote about this game as well, stating, I love the coin exchange mechanism and the different ways to score. With viewer Cam Manchan adding, a beta of Nidavellir was recently released on Board Game Arena. 
It's such a good game with gorgeous art and you've never seen so many good looking dwarves. Haven't I? You ha ha maybe I have. You don't know me. I haven't. Fine. The excitement in the air is electric as the leaders round the last corner and head to the finish line. Each team has used cunning and skill to position their sprinter for this very moment. But only one has done enough to pull off the win. This is Flam Rouge, this month's highest voted game by our viewers. Flam Rouge is a fast-paced tactical bicycle racing game where each player controls a team of two riders, a ruler and a sprinter. Those players' goal is to be the first to cross the finish line with one of their riders, and players move their riders forward by drawing and playing cards from that rider's specific deck, depleting it as they go, using slipstreams to avoid exhaustion and positioning their team for a well-timed sprint to the finish line. Flam Rouge receives a lot of love this month, with viewer Vincent V saying, best racing game? I think so, and Simon B proclaiming it the best racing game I've played. Well, those are strong statements, aren't they? In the comments, let us know if you agree. Otherwise, what racing game do you think is better? Be sure to reference your sources and show your work, like, like how we do. And if you want to vote for the games that will be featured in our next episode, follow the link in the video description to the join the Watch It Played Patreon team. And for personal game picks by the Watch It Played staff, that's me and everyone else, watch this month's On The Radar episode. Thanks everyone. Take care.